All of the economies in the region have made progress to reduce their carbon footprint. But as you know, Asia is the, still the fastest growing part of the world, so just higher output and higher consumption is going to mean the overall carbon emissions could still increase. In fact, you know, probably most of the increase in renewable energy uh, production is in China because they've expanded this at a very rapid, they've made very large investments. And as we know, they've become leaders in some important uh, renewable technologies like producing very cheap solar panels, and that's with government support. One of the things we're re recommending in the Asian Economic Integration Report 2023 is uh, to really promote much freer trade in environmental goods and services so that countries really can access the cheapest, most helpful technologies to become uh, cleaner. Um, and that will be an important part. The other part of the barriers is that you need a regulatory environment and an institutional environment that can be attractive to firms that want to come in and make large investments in renewable energy. Now, it's still hard to finance this shift quickly because there's a lot of coal plants being built. For instance, at the Asian Development Bank, we have been uh, developing a new energy transition mechanism which mobilizes a broad range of donor support to structure a financing vehicle to make it more economically viable for countries to shift away from coal basically pay coal plant owners to close early and at the same time support investment in renewables to replace that lost energy supply. Well, the size of the economy, I mean in the case of Singapore, isn't really the main point. I think it's really to be an example of what can be done. Singapore obviously is still a very important economy, it's a financial center and it can play a leading role by example in developing models for how climate uh, objectives can be furthered in a global economy. Uh, there are clear challenges, but at the same time there's enormous momentum now. Uh, a huge growing concern that this has become an urgent issue. And we're also seeing a really a sea change in the private sector in the attitudes of investors and consumers who also value green products, green investments. I think making this type of progress uh, requires both a seizing of the economic opportunities that are presented by choosing this reform path, but also it will require a collective commitment to share responsibility and share the burdens of meeting a clear threat to humanity as a whole.